Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Titus chapter 2 But speak thou, Titus, the things which become sound doctrine. Again, Timothy and Titus are written to ministers, ministers of the Bible, there to speak sound doctrine. Why? That the aged men be sober, living right, proper, and without alcohol, grave, temperate, temperature, you know, not too high, not too cold, sound in faith, sound in faith, sound doctrine, is rooted and grounded, in charity and in patience. So what is a minister, according to Paul writing to Titus, what is the sound doctrine? And we're going to read more, but so men will know what to do. The aged men, they know what sober is, what grave, temperance, faith, charity, and patience. Those are the results of the preacher preaching sound doctrine. The minister is to preach to the congregation so the people will cause to understand and to know what God is wants of them and what God does not want from them so they will be established and rooted in the word the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness how would the women know what holiness is unless it comes from the sound doctrine of the preacher listen these aged men and these, these women the people are going to look at it, they've got a living to do they got a life to live. They don't have time to study the scriptures. It is the preacher's job to study in the scriptures and be paid and have labor about, according to Acts and according to the First Timothy, that the preacher gets paid for studying the word of God so he can teach his people. So sound doctrine will teach a woman holiness, not false accusers. Where would you get sound doctrine on that today? How about the, the, the Gospels of Jesus Christ when they hired and found people that stood up and said, yeah, we'll lie about Jesus. That would be a great illustration. All right, this is what the people did, and this is not what you're supposed to do. Not given too much wine. Ooh, ooh, not much wine. So... You got to teach the people limitations. If you don't, they're going to go over in abundance. Teachers of good things. Now, where are they going to learn that? They're going to learn that from the teaching of the pulpit. So the preacher already is going to teach the males and he's going to teach the females. Bible conduct. That they, the women, may teach the younger, the young women. So, all right, you got a preacher. He's he's in the pulpit. He's to teach sound doctrine. He's to teach the man what to do and how to act. He's to teach the woman what to do, how to act. Now the women are going to step into the ministry. You know, a woman is not to talk in the church and all that. Okay, that they may teach the young women. Well, how can you do that if you can't? talk so can a woman teach yes who younger women no men 
So a woman can, can teach, just not men over her authority. And let me see here. I got a note here. And this is from the experience that this age woman has to give to the younger woman. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Why? Because they ought to be sober, serious. As their husbands, verse 2. So the husbands have taught their wives, so the wives can teach the young women sober. You see that? That's the moans of a, fa of a family. That's the hierarchy that God established in the family. That God, Jesus Christ, the man, the woman, the younger. And here it doesn't have to be the children. You got to be in subjection. You got to be what the Bible says and then you will get good results. To be sober. To love their husband. Well, every young woman thinks, oh, that 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 uh, Prince Charming is just going to be wonderful, and he's just going to be great, and that aged woman's got to take that young lady and say, no, your life is not going to be, you know, better roses and wonderful. And they've got to understand that loving a man is not easy, and the Bible says to that the that they may teach. All right, we already talked about the sober. Teach to love their husbands. That is something that's got to be taught. Not about the birds and bees and sexual life, but that woman to have a life where she may get married, she needs to know how to love her husband and teach to love their children. They got to Listen, that man, that person she's going to marry, and those children she's going to marry, they're going to get on her nerves. That guy is a sinner. Those children are sinners. And you're going to have bad days. You're going to have terrible days. And you're going to have to love that man and love those children. And the only way you're going to learn how is from someone who's already had experience. And every once in a while that woman's going to go, oh, man, I just can't believe my family. That woman just wrapped her arm. Oh, yeah, I know. Went through that too. You'll get over it. The rewards of the Lord are wonderful. I don't think I've ever seen Titus chapter 3 ever put in practice. That they may teach the young women to be sober, serious, to love their husband, and to love their children. To be discreet, chaste, pure, innocent, virgins. Keepers at home, homemaids, housewives, that's where the name comes from, housewife, right there, Titus chapter 2, verse 5, and housewives is not a deplorable, unkind, filthy word, it's a Bible word. And if God, you were to hold you to being a house like, like he has told you in Titus chapter 2, you will be rewarded as a housewife. Listen, isn't house life, housework, that's what I was looking at, isn't housework labor? So is God so unkind that he's not going to reward a Christian wife for doing the work that she's supposed to be doing? Whether her husband takes care of her or whether her husband does not take care of her. And if her husband does not take care of her, the more that God will bless you. Look at Joseph. He did right and did wonderful and... God took care of him. The the Rebecca came to the well and fed all those uh, those camels. A Abraham's servant gave her earrings and bracelets. Why? Because she did work. And Proverbs says if somebody does work, you're supposed to pay them. So housekeeping is not anti-biblical. It's biblical. Good. You're supposed to be good. Now it's interesting. The Bible says there's none good. Well, that's a contradiction. No, it's not. Once you get saved and you know the love of God through Jesus Christ, and you have the indwelling Holy Spirit in you, and Christ liveth in you, you're born again, you can now be good. 
A man without Jesus Christ, without salvation, cannot be good. But a Christian can be good. Obedient to their own husbands. No one else's husband. That woman in Proverbs 31, she can do work, but she does it under her husband's household. Not under another man that rules over her. We, we studied that. And I know this day and age, we're in a thing that you've got to have two people work in a household. Times of trouble, difficulties, and, and medical bills and stuff like that. I mean, pray to God. Do the best you can. Listen, if your life has been in turmoil because of medical bills, that's something you didn't ask for. That's something that you didn't go out and run up yourself. Because I can speak about that. Obedient to their own husbands. I've seen the note here. Genesis 3.16. That goes all the way back to Eve. Now watch this. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So women... You are called to an office of a wife and mother. Failure to do that work, you blaspheme the word of God. That's what it says. And there is nothing wrong with going to an older woman and saying, Hey, I need help. I need to know. And what we read here, sound doctrine, that, that, that woman in Judica is to be another Christian who is doing right. Don't turn to a, a worldly Christian. Don't turn to a lost person. Don't turn to how-to books. Don't turn to the television set. Turn to a saved woman who is trying to do right and her fruits prove to be right. You say, well, how can I also know? What further can I get to go to the older woman for help? If she's going to match the classifications of the widow woman in First Timothy. I mean, if her husband were to die and she matches that and the church could take care of her, she's a good woman to follow. Scripture with Scripture. You can't just go to any woman and say, hey, help me. You go to someone who's not doing right and they'll deceive you. They'll lie to you. Not, not a woman has been raised by the sound doctrine and that is under her husband, verse 2. Uh, young men, likewise, what? Likewise what? Grave, temperate, sound in faith, charity, patience, holiness, not false accusers, not much wine, teacher of good things, sober, love, we, we love your wives, love your children, discreet, keepers at home, good, obedient to your wife. You know, you got to listen to her too. Pilate did wrong. His wife came to him and said, listen, I have nothing to do with this man. Uh, I don't need to listen to you. And your life was damned. Now, Adam, on the other hand, listened to his wife and got in trouble. That's either or. That's way in the spirit. But likewise, exhort, exhort to be sober-minded. Proverbs 4.23. Now, keep your mind free of drink and keep your mind serious. You're a husband. You're going to be a husband. You may be a father. You are a father. College days and all that's gone. Start now. In all things, all things, showing thyself a pattern of good work. Now, my mom used to make all kinds of stuff. And she would go down to the, to the uh, I forget what you call it. Uh, she went to a, the sewing store, whatever you want to call it. And she would buy a pattern for a dress, for a coat, whatever she made. And she would lay that pattern out on the table and then put it on top of the cloth she had. And she would cut that pattern and fold that pattern. That pattern is also a blueprint. It tells you what the end result should be. And if you're to cut here, you're to cut here. If you're to put a staple here, you put a staple here. If it says one inch, you don't go two. And that's what these young men are. They to be patterns to 
the people in the church. Your life conduct should not gather you away from God. You ought not be lying. You ought not be stealing. You ought not be fooling around. You ought to be, hey, let's be godlike. Young men of good works. So you got to learn that from sound doctrine from the preacher, verse 1, of chapter 2. And your own study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It takes the preaching and it takes studying the word of God to know what is good. How do I know what is good? Study the Bible. In doctrine, what you teach, showing uncorruptness, you're not to be corrupt. You're to be opposite of corrupt. Gravity, serious, grounded, sincerity. You really want to do it. You really are in it with your heart. Sound speech. Well, look at the soundness. Look at being footed and grounded and established. 1 Timothy 6 3. That cannot be condemned. Now, some will try to condemn you, but let it be to their own fault and to their own lies. Let your mouth so speak that, like Jesus Christ, I find no fault in him. And they're going to bring false witnesses before you like they did before the Sanhedrin. This guy's story tells a story that doesn't back that guy's story, which doesn't back his story, which this guy doesn't back his story. We're all confused about the stories. We can't do it, but Jesus told the truth. And you ought to have the sound speech, the fact that, okay, you're not going to lie. But you ought to have the sound speech that speaks of the Bible and God as a Christian and not worldliness and fooling around and wickedness. Your mouth ought to be as a man of God. That sound speech. That he that is of the contrary, lost, unsaved. Or he's against you saved. Somebody who's not walking right in the Lord. Contrary part. May be ashamed. Your life ought to be that someone who does not want to live right. They look at you and they hate you. Because you're the model person. You're the one that does right. And not for a show off because you just do it for the Lord. And people will hate you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. People should look at you and say, I know you want to be around him. That guy is just too clean, too pure, too, too Bible. I hate him. He's doing right. He's doing good. And then when judgment seat of Christ. They don't get the crowns, but you do. How's that? To be to their shame that they don't get no rewards from Jesus Christ. Having no evil. No, that's not what it says. Having no evil thing to say of you. These people who are against God, against the word, they can't speak of you being evil and wicked. Now again, they may lie. But don't let their evil speaking of you be the truth. Well, you won't believe it. I saw that guy come out of a packer store with a six-pack six of beer in his hand. Don't let it be so. That guy doesn't take care of his family. Don't let it be so. Now, they can lie about it. But that's their lie. They will lie about you. Don't you make an evil truth. What I'm trying to say is don't do something that's wicked that they can say, hey. And all that, that Satan charged Job, Job was found still faithful. Exhort servants. Now we're talking about verse 1. We're still talking about the preacher, the minister of the church. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their masters. The employee relationship with the employer is a Bible sound doctrine. 
We saw it in Timothy. You see it in Proverbs. Jesus spoke about it. You are to be extra faithful, extra proper, extra good on the job. Whether that boss is saved or unsaved. And more so because he's unsaved to a testimony that you might be a witness that that boss may get saved. Don't you be an excuse to you, the people over you in the job. Oh, I'm not going to be a Christian. Look at that guy. He doesn't do his job. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't do it all. He he, cutting time and wastes his time. And no. Obedient unto their own masters. What that boss tells you to do, you do. And to please them well in all things. That boss ought to say, you know what? I don't like that guy. I'm pleased with him. And if he's going to bite his tongue off to say that, so be it. That guy irritates the fire out of me. He's happy. He's lucky. He's, he, he, he's, and he obeys. He's too good. He's valuable. I hate he has a Bible at his desk, but no, we, we can't get rid of him because he's an asset to us. I'd love to get rid of him, but we can't. To be pleased them well in all things, not answering again. That, that, you know, you shouldn't have to have that boss to, you know, scold you. I think that is telling the person you're not to talk back to. Yeah, not to talk back too. That sounds good, yeah. You know, when the boss is away, everybody starts talking about him. You're joined to talk about the boss. That's wrong. Right, the, the boss tells you to do something and you argue with the boss. That's, that's, what they are, yeah, that's another good aspect, too, arguing. Not answering again. Why should I do it? There you go. I don't want to do it. It's not my job. First Timothy 6, 1 and 2. You're getting paid. It is your job. You can walk off. Not purloining, that's stealing from the master or the boss. That that word has a, has a profound definition to the conduct and to your employer. You don't take a staple. You don't make a copy from his copier machine with his paper and electricity. Now, you may ask him, say, boss, you know, when I got some free time, I need to make a copy of this thing or need five copies if he gives you permission. But stealing from the boss is spoken against. And the preachers to preach about this. But showing all good fidelity. Um, what's that? No. Oh, okay. That's faithfulness. You're to be faithful to your boss. He wants you at 9 o'clock in the morning. You don't show up at 9.01. He wants you Monday through Friday. You don't call out because there's a beach party or, or whatever. You're to be there. You're to be there on time. Not earlier. That they may adorn... To draw up, to decorate, 1 Peter 3, 1, the doctrine of God. Oh, there's a doctrine, the teaching of God. What is taught? You know, you can have a Bible, read your Bible at lunchtime. You can, at lunchtime, listen to your, your preacher preach, and you can, you can do whatever it is in the Bible in your lunchtime, or before work, or after work. But if you are not doing what the Bible tells you to do about as an employee and you are failing your boss, you have gone against the teaching of the Bible. You're wrong. Our Savior in all things. God our Savior again. We talked about that the other night. God is Jesus and Jesus is God. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Well, look at that. Salvation of God is grace. Has appeared to all men. Somehow, some way, every man will get. Somehow, I don't. I'm, God is obligated by the word. 
Because you need the word to be saved. Somehow every man will get about Jesus saves. Teaching. Doctrine, teaching, teaching, doctrine. Teaching us that. Us Christians. Denying ungodliness. Refusing. If it's not godly, refuse it. And verse 12 teaches free will. You don't have to do this. I advise you to do it. But if you don't want to get any rewards, you don't want to hear well done, then disobey verse 12. Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Plural. A Christian has no being, a minister has no being in ungodliness and lust. We should live soberly, without alcohol, without drunkenness, and seriousness. Righteously, we ought to live right. How do you know what right is? Again, it's the Bible. And godly. Now again, you want to do godly? I'll tell you what you do to that newborn uh, person in Christ that, that you took part in them getting saved. Say, sir, you want to do right in the Bible? You want? To, yes, I do. You want to live God? Yes. I get. You know, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You got to tell that young Christian what, what he's getting himself into. Say, if you want to do right, <laughs> you need to read Pauline epistles about suffering, affliction, troubles, problems, tribulations. Because if you want to do right, that's what the Bible says, verse twelve. But it's not going to come easy. You got to get off that that prosperity gospel. Everything will work good to those, you know. That's taking that verse out of context. Godly in this present world. Well, this world is just so wicked. So what? If this world is so wicked, denying ungodliness, denying the worldly lust. Live soberly, live righteously, live godly, no matter what's going on in this world. You do right. Well, the Christian, I don't care what the Christians are doing. You do right. Well, the Antichrist is going, you do right. My boy, you do right. My wife, you do right. My husband, you do right. Looking for that blessed hope. Happy hole. That's what word blessed. When Leah named her boy, uh, which one was it, Gad? She said, all the people are going to be happy. So she named him, which means blessed, happy. Asher. Looking for that blessed hope. Asher means ble uh, happy, blessed. And the glorious appearing of the great God. He's great. And our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now run back down here to verse 10. At the end, our Savior, God. God, our Savior. It says here, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses will say, well, here's God on the left side or right side, whatever. And here's Jesus at the left hand and right side. That and separates God and Jesus as two different people. Well, that and is called the syntax. I'm going to teach you some English. Not that I do this often. When you have two nouns connected by an, and the definite article the is in front of the first one, first noun, but not the second one, it's connecting the two nouns together. So this syntax and says that God and Jesus are one. And if you didn't want to know English, go like I said, go back down to verse number 10 again. When Jesus calls us, whether to die and we come out of the grave, or we are alive and well, we are raptured to, to meet those in the cloud. When we see Jesus, we're going to see God. When we see God, we're going to see Jesus. How's that? That's the blessed hope. Of all the hopes, oh, I want to get my diploma. Nope. I want to be the CEO of this company. Nope. 
I want to make a million dollars, win the lottery. No. I want to get married. No. Those are great things to look forward to, but the greatest, the blessed, the happiest one that you can get is looking for Jesus. Now, again, let's go back to 2 Timothy 4 real quick. And look at verse 8, 4, 8. Hence there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. Here it is. You get the crown of righteousness. So what is verse 12? What is living righteously? One of those things, living righteously, even this present world, is Jesus is coming. That's the hope. I may not be able to trust my family at Walmart, but the Lord may call me home. I may not be able to trust the other drivers on the road, but whoa, what Jesus can do when he comes. And there are some Christians out there, oh, no, 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 don't let Jesus go. There's some Christians out there who will put the Christians in the tribulation. Oh, no, thank you very much. All right, Jesus and God, who gave himself for us, for God so loved the world, what's it say? Oh, wait a minute. Who gave himself for us, isn't that Jesus? And yet God said that he gave. There you go again. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem, buy back, purchase back us, humans that are saved from all iniquity. I'm too filthy for God. No, you're not too filthy. I'm too wicked. No, you're not. God would never love me. God would never. Yes, he will. And purify unto himself a particular people. You know what he's going to do when the church is raptured? He's going to purify us. He's going to make us clean. He has to because we're filthy. I'm sorry. I was saved on the I was saved on a Saturday afternoon in April. I have definitely sinned since that time. More than once. But when the rapture happens, when that blessed hope comes, he is going to purify me at the judgment seat of Christ. And after that purification, I will no longer ever insult and afflict or do any harm to my Savior again. I'll be as pure as anything could be pure without the touch of man or animals. How's that? I will be sinless in glory. I will not ever have to think about another thought in my life. I will not ever have to be worried if I'm going to sin. I'll be purified by Jesus Christ and the finished work of Jesus. A particular people. I'm a particular people to God. And even the world looks at me as particular. What are you doing? Peculiar. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? Why are you screaming Jesus? Why are you giving me this piece of paper? Why do you go to church? Why do you try to do right? And sometimes even Christians will look at you and say, you know what? Why? You're weird. Zealous of good works. There's that good works again. There are works after salvation. Doing good. You can be good after you're saved. You can't be good before you're saved. How's that? That's what separates you from the world. You are now good by Jesus Christ. Do without Jesus Christ, not obey Jesus Christ, and you're not doing good. But the capability is there by Jesus Christ. All right? These things speak. Chapter 2, verse 1, speaking to Titus. Before the congregation, before people, on the streets, these things speak, what? Verses 2 to 14. Paul just gave Titus some preaching outlines, some preaching lessons, preaching subjects for his church. And exhort. Man, you give it to him. You tell them. You explain to him. You preach it. You rebuke him. And rebuke with all authority. You get in that pulpit and you stand as a minister, you do it with the authority of the scriptures. It said, become sound doctrine. Let no man despise thee. And what that's saying, listen, 
Don't take any man to their conduct. Don't listen to, you know, I think you should tone down the message. You know what? They're going to despise you because of what you're doing is right. You do what is right. Let God love you. Let God be pleased with you. But let man not despise thee because of who you are and what you're doing. Let them despise you and God because what is being preached. Not because you're living wickedly, not because you're doing bad, not because your conduct's not becoming. Don't give somebody an excuse. That's what that's saying. If they despise thee, let it be because of righteousness. Not because you're an idiot and doing stupid things. So there is plenty for a preacher to teach his congregation. There is plenty for them to hear. There is a lot of subjects. And what we saw break down in chapter 2 is the family, the man, the husband, the wife, the young wives, the young men going to work. And then your conduct as a Christian in general. What you're supposed to do. you got to tell those people because they're not going to take it for granted. They're not going to study the Bible. Most won't read the Bible. So they're not going to know anything. And if they hear the message and they reject it, they will be found without excuse because you were faithful in sound doctrine. You will be rewarded. They won't. If they listen to you and they obey what the word and what you taught them, then you both get crowns. You both get rewarded. It would be a pleasure. So the ministry is not something to take haphazardly. 